Hey folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to another episode of our Let's Play of Factorio version 0.17. Still, uh, I think it's 017.38, still one of the pre-release builds, but having a hoot with it. A couple of things have changed since the last time we played. Not, not, not a ton of major things, but I went ahead and set up um, sort of our proper stone mining area, and also a thing to... Um, I was going to say smelt, but we're not really smelting here. Uh, the, uh, some furnaces to turn the stone into bricks here, which are also driving all the way down to the area that will sort of be our bus. But in addition to that, I am turning the bricks into a little bit of wall. So we got a little bit of uh, uh, magazine production, right? Right? Bullets, firearm magazines. Yeah, right over here, as well as some wall production here. And I think... I set up this little copper smelting since the last time, although you can see it's not currently going anywhere. But did a little bit of that, cleaned up a little bit of the um, alien nest nearby, and put down some radars, and then just sort of walked away for a while, made sure there was no aliens like attacking us. Walked away so that the radars could expose more of the map here. So we've got a large iron deposit here, because the one we've got at home has got less than half a million. This one here is at nine million. We've got another one here with about six million, another one here with about six million. Effectively, we could probably consider these to be almost to the same deposit here uh, for the purpose of probably setting up something like a train station right here and then feeding that all into things. So it's sort of a 12 million uh, point deposit. Coal over here. So we have 280K and here we got 1.6 million, 3.4 million copper. By the time we have to get to this copper, that's not gonna mean too much. This copper deposit, copper's a funny thing. You need so little of it early on and then you need all the copper. You just, 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 you just need all of it. Bunch of coal. We've got some uranium over here, which would be interesting if we want to do some power stuff and some nukes later on. Um, currently, we have no need to truly expand. What I want to do is two things. First, I want to put up some walls here to protect a couple of key parts of our base, especially as we expand, there'll be a little bit more pollution going on. And actually, you can see this one here, this alien nest over here is being tickled ever so slightly. Um, I could go and clear it, and I may, but what I want to do first is make sure to set up some walls in, in the way. Uh, we don't actually have gate tech, do we? You can see, actually, I haven't been running the technology thing at all uh, since the last episode. I didn't want to get too far ahead of all y'all. Uh, and I want to set up a proper research area. That's one of the goals that we're going to kind of have um, this episode or the next. But let's, so we're going to go and wall off. You can see here, I ran some cables here to get a uh, radar going on. So we'd have a little bit more range. I've got a few set up in a few different places. So you can see like we have vision, all this bright areas, places I actually have vision because of um, near radar coverage. And then, yeah, it keeps sort of, they keep revealing some areas over here. So more radars. Uh, the faster that goes and also distance is a thing. Radars do tend to attract um, aliens though. They don't pollute, but they tend to, I don't know, make noise or, or in some way aggro the little alien dudes. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna grab our walls. I guess I'll put it on my uh, on my hot bar for now. I've got, I've got a lot of walls as you can see. And I'm gonna go ahead and build a giant wall over here. I build a wall and make the aliens pay for it. There we go, gotta keep out the wildlings and other references. I'm gonna double wall this up. Ooh, these new wall graphics are quite sexy. This definitely looks like a beefy wall now. I like it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a, ooh, I got a gun somewhere shooting. Okay, so I left, after I cleared out a few of these nests, I left a few guns around to prevent respawning. So the way the nests work is from an existing nest, I think what can happen sometimes, if, if I recall correctly, this is how the mechanics sort of works. Every now and again, they'll get a, a small group of aliens, walk to another potential nest spot, sit there for a bit, and then if it's all good, then they'll, they'll create an actual other nest, which will also grow over time. That actually might be what's going on over here. I'm not sure. So um, in some places where I cleared a nest, I leave a gun behind. Just, I mean, eventually the gun will take damage and die, but it delays some of the respawn effect. Um, and ultimately what we want to do is certainly make sure we clear out anything that's in pollution range and then also keep up some guards. But for now, walling off this choke point is going to be really nice. So I'm going to get a series of guns here. What I'll probably do is sort of just space them out a little bit. We don't need a crazy infinite amount of guns over here, but something kind of like that. Now, the next thing is, I mean, these guns are gonna need bullets, and so I could put bullets in there, but what we might do, and I've never really done this before, but I think it might actually be kind of useful, is set up a bit of a system to reload the guns. Um, this one's actually not in a good spot. 
we'll just remove it for now. Where what we'll do is we'll sort of do this, because what happens is it can be hard to predict which guns need the most bullets, right? But let's say we do something where I'll just use up this wooden chest like this. I haven't really experimented with this, so I'm, I'm going to try and we're going to see how it works. But let's say we do something kind of like this, okay? And then we empower this. Oh, it's kind of annoying that it doesn't quite reach, but I guess that'll have to be okay. Um, and then load this up with, I don't know, a ton of bullets. Because it won't, I don't know how much it'll fill this up. I think the way it works for production is they try to feed enough resources into a like assembly machine for I think 30 seconds worth of production or something like that. Um, I think these gun turrets can fit a full stack. A full stack of bullets is 200. So it's, it looks like it's doing 10. This is probably enough for 30 seconds of shooting or something like that. So this way I don't have to worry about like, oh, 200, 200 and stack a bunch. You just put a bunch of bullets in here. They'll sit on here. They'll get loaded over time. So they'll always have some bullets in here and whichever gun ends up shooting the most just because you know that aliens tend to be coming from a certain angle or whatever it'll be kind of constantly reloaded so i think that's okay i mean it's a little bit more overhead oops hold on because we need to actually have um you know we have to have a little bit of power out here so we can't have it in the middle of nowhere but it should go so it looks like if we do this all these guns will get loaded with 10 magazines each which should leave plenty in the box over here and later on if we get logistics we can have them you know refilling the bullets or something for us or all kinds of different things like that so i think that's kind of okay in fact i'm going to drop the other all the bullets I had on me in here as well. Um, and I'll go and pick up some more at home. So now we don't have to worry so much about the north. I mean, you know, the, the, the aliens can chip away at that wall or do range damage to our guns over time. But it, it would take a long time to go through and we'll get some warning that, you know, there's some combat going on there and we can go and repair things as needed. But we don't really have to worry about aliens suddenly swarming into our base from the north, which is nice. I may have picked up too many walls. It's possible. Maybe what I'll do is I'll go and put some back in the box. Uh, I'll also pick up some more bullets, but yeah, now we've got some production here. We're gonna get started on our bus. And we'll talk about what the deal with the bus is and why that design is so common and popular here. If I, there we go. This is gonna say Control Right Click. Here, I'll do it again. I'll put about half, or put it half these walls back in the box. So we'll keep some walls around so I can do some things. And then bullet wise as well, I'll Control Right Click that to grab half the bullets in there, which is more than I need for shooting, but it's gonna be great if we set up another defensive location, and that's gonna be swell. All right, so. Let's bring this copper that's down here. And actually, let me do a little lane balance on this copper because I'm only working the one side of it right now. I don't remember if we talked about lane balancing. So right now you can see all the... Um, so when you... So... Um, oh, there's a random gun. I guess I built on wherever I'd ended up building my... Uh, dropping my uh, my sidearm at some point. Which I guess can go there. Um, anyway. Inserters. Inserters will grab from either side of a belt as required to do some things. However, they always place on the far side. So you can see here it's only using one side, um, which won't be so much of an issue if we build up the second side. But what you can do, and it's very handy, is you can do a little something like this, like this, like this, like that. There we go. So the splitter will split this on two sides so you get an even distribution and it fills up both sides of this little belt here. Um, and rebalancing belts from time to time as things get pulled off for various reasons is a very nice and convenient thing to do. And I'm gonna actually queue up a few more. I really wanna set some automated belt production soon, but let's make sure we have enough so that we can do what we want over here. <clears throat> so this is the main bus. Now the usage of the word bus here, I think more or less um, comes from mostly like computer programming and things like that, or not, computer programming is probably the, the wrong way to word it, more like electrical or electronic design or something. Um, but it's, so it's a central area where all of our goodies are gonna be. And then what you can do is you can have all your production just built up next to this bus and you'll always have all the various resources that you're gonna want. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna have four lines that are gonna be dedicated to iron production. Um, and I suppose I could build it up now. We can actually build a little uh, balancer here. We could have a little discussion about that. Um, bah, 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 bah. If memory serves, I think that's correct. I could double check from a blueprint here. 
but this is, assuming I've done it correctly, a four lane balancer. What it's gonna do is it's gonna take all the inputs, um, like up to four coming in. This is a four by four balancer, I guess is actually the right way to say it. A four by four balancer, assuming I've built it correctly, I probably have a blueprint book uh, already loaded on this computer. Um, blue belt balancer, I mean, I guess. Do I have like, oh, yellow belt balancer. So just to make sure that I've done it correctly, we look up the four by four balancer. Yeah, good, that looks right. Okay, so what this does is no matter how the inputs come in on these four, it'll all output evenly broken down on four on the other side, which is really handy to be able to do that. And again, there's blueprints for two by twos and two to fours and all kinds of different things. Four by four is one of the most commonly used one, which is like one, you know, only ones you've got, like I've got memorized because you do this so often. And it's not too bad. Like an eight by eight is like a horrible mess of spaghetti um, that people have worked out. But there we go. So we've got that. So um, four lines of, of iron is going to be pretty good and usually will serve all your needs, especially by the time that this doesn't allow enough iron throughput, you'll probably, you'll have upgraded the whole thing to red belts that are faster and so on and so forth. Um, a couple of copper is fine unless you are making like your green circuits on your bus, which I don't think is a very good idea. So I'll do a couple of those and then um, figure it out. This is sort of steel, but again, we don't need four lines of steel. Honestly, one line of steel is probably enough. This is for circuits. What I'll probably end up doing is do something like two greens, maybe three greens, and then one of the red. Actually, maybe I'll do two green, one red, one blue. That's most likely what's gonna happen here. A little miscellaneous here, which is gonna be for plastic. Uh, and I don't know. So probably these last two in this like foursome I had sort of like listed as copper is probably gonna be my stone and my brick, um, which I could bring over now because I've got it producing over here. Yeah, I do actually have it lined up like that, but I'm gonna save my belts for just a scooch before I do that. Now. I was just saying circuits. So green and red and blue circuits are very important. And green circuits, you're gonna end up producing ludicrous amounts. Now, it's not that you need ludicrous amounts of green circuits per se. It's that you need ludicrous amounts of green circuits to make red circuits. And then you need a super stupid amount of green and red circuits to make blue circuits. So uh, circuit production early on, just like you don't need a ton of copper early on. You don't need a ton of copper. Really use the most of the copper to make green circuits. And you don't need a ridiculous amount early on. It's once you start needing red that it becomes insane. So usually for the green circuit, I set up a little green circuit production right over here for now. And then later on, what I do is I figure out like, I thought it was a rock I could dig out. Um, is I set up a dedicated green circuit production, often like on a train route or something like that, just to be able to produce it in ludicrous numbers. So what I wanna do is I wanna make a little green circuit production and I'm gonna build it right down here, uh, which should be fairly easy to do. And then after we've got the green circuit production, we will set up our science. Now we don't need green circuit for red, but we will need it for green and green's gonna happen like basically right away. We're gonna build the red circuit or the red science and then the green immediately. So I'm just making sure I've got space, although I, you don't need quite this much space. All right, so we've got, I think, yeah, I've got 18 of these assembly machine ones. I should probably queue up a couple. There we go, just some more over here because we're gonna need a good amount. So even though I've sort of planned out the amount of space I might wanna work with over here, and in a sense, maybe I should have inverted this because these are the most common ones. Um, but I don't know, I might I might go above, I might go below. I, I haven't decided yet. The green circuits I'm gonna build down here. So. Green circuits, well, what I can do is I can plop one of these down so we can talk about what needs to be made for green circuits. So green circuits need iron plates and copper cables. They build quite quickly. You get one every half second. So they do get produced extremely quickly and they need three copper cables. Now those also produce quickly, but it is gonna be hammered pretty heavily by circuits. Now there's a bunch of different layouts you will find um, and a, a lot of them are much denser than what I'm gonna make here. But I'm quite keen on doing something like this. Now you get two copper cables every time this runs, you get two copper cables and it runs every half second. So you get four cables per second. And what we need for the green circuits is we need three cables, or sorry, we need six cables per second, right? Because this runs twice per second. So this is gonna produce eight per second. We only need six per second. But then what you would do is I do this here. Uh, I'm gonna hit shift right click to sort of copy the build instruction. Shift click to paste, shift right click, paste. And it turns out that this, ends up being basically the ratio that you want because we're producing 
um, 12, right? 12 wires per second, and we need to consume 12 wires per second. So that works out beautifully. This is So this uses up a fair amount of space, but it works pretty nicely. And then all we do on this line is if we get copper plates and iron plates on this, because your uh, green uh, circuits, you just need iron plates and the wire, it works well. So you do something like grab, grab, oh, let's center it. I don't know how that, well that'll work with the uh, the cables that we've got, but we'll center it up because it'll look kind of nice. So we can grab from here. Um, and then on the other side, it's just going to be the green bits that get pulled out and get put onto some sort of output, which is going to get sent out to the bus. Easy, peasy, lemon squeezy. So what we're going to do is we've got to get copper and iron plates on there. So I'm going to want my copper to come out vaguely here. Um, so we're going to use an underground belt. When we get our stone and our brick, we're going to want to just jump over this. Actually, we're going to want to start slightly sooner. Because what we're going to do here is we're going to ask for this. So with this by itself would pull copper off the bottom line. By doing this first, we also grab from the top line and try to balance things out. Um, and you can do priority queuing and things like that. And then what we're going to do, knowing that there's going to be some extra lines here, is we'll be ready to jump over this block and jump over here. And by having these lines that are um, like four high, this is exactly the distance that you can skip with a yellow underground belt. The reds and blues have longer distance, but the yellow is that. So that's why you end up with these, these things that are four wide and a gap of two. It's just perfect for fitting all this in here. And then what's going to happen get that in here first we'll do that copper will end up on one side and then what we want on the other side over here I guess there's supposed to be another underground skip over there um, like that for whatever is going to be there later on there we go, exactly and then really I should have this after the four-way balancer and I'm gonna have to move things or something later on um, but for now, I'll just do this. It's gonna be okay. So now we should be able to start our green circuit production. We just need to get some power down here. Where the heck's my power gonna come from? Way up over here. Do, 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 do. And yeah, so the advantage is, is you get all your resources in one area in a fairly well-organized way, and it's really easy to build up your manufacturing. Some of these are probably gonna have to get moved or we'll do some undergrounds, uh, but that's okay. So if we do this, so that'll reach that nicely. But yeah, if we do this, we'll uncover that. So right, that's right. We need one every little gap here. And then we also need it on the other side. It's like sort of annoying because it just barely doesn't reach. If you get, once you get the medium poles, it will, but that's okay. So this, again, it, it's fairly long and not in a sense space efficient but we can grow it. Uh, and we'll do something a little derpy on the end. That's okay. Uh, really derpy on the end. Okay. So green circuit, green circuit. Wire, wire, wire. Now, right now, it's worth noting that the yellow inserters cannot grab things as quickly as we need for maximum construction rate. And that will be doubly true once um, these things get replaced with inserter or assembler twos, which are faster. Although I'm trying to remember, I think things work differently now. Uh, you go that way, you go that way, you go that way. Um, the assembler ones, can use more ingredients now in 0.17, can it? There's something like that. So I'm just gonna stop talking before I tell you too many lies. All right, we got that. We will build up the same thing on the other side um, for the green circuits, but for now, all I'm gonna do, because we, we've got more than enough green circuits to do what we wanna do at this time. So I'm just gonna put on a little lane balancer here. But yeah, we will have to build up the other side. And this is gonna carry us through a long part of the game. Um, really, really until we start really needing our red circuits, then all of a sudden it's going to be super, super in, in, uh, insufficient. 
like there's a word I'm looking for. Um, so you're gonna jump over there. And then over here, it's sort of gonna be a, like that, because this will be some red and some blue or something like that. Um, and I'm leaving some room for the future. But these are things like, you won't know the first time you uh, you do this. It's it's sort of, oh, I was gonna say, why is it, why is it doing that? It's because of the blueprint. Uh, it's like, you know, Lessons you've learned because things have gone terribly unwell in the past. But yeah, and then what I'll do is I'll have uh, the ability to support a couple of lines worth of green circuits over here, which right now are basically going to act as a big buffer, right? They're just going to store a bunch because it's not like we're producing fast enough to fill those at this time. But I'm going to want two lines available in the, in the future. And at least for now, it means we can store some green circuits on here. And that's going to be groovy. All right. Done, done, done. Boom. Um... I'm trying to decide, like I was kind of going to do the science first. I'm wondering if I should set up my, um, my words are hard, uh, inserter and belt production, but I'm kind of going to want to do that with blues. I don't know. Tell you what, let's go and set up the, uh, the inserter and belt production right now. So I will need, I will need more belts just for now to stretch things out. I'm just going to get around these little cliffs here, which are going to kind of take up a lot of space, which is annoying. But we wanted the green circuits for this. Oh, right. The other thing I was going to sort of keep room for, and I want to make sure that I've sort of allocated some room, is I'm going to want to be ready to, like, move some sort of liquids over here. So I just got to make sure we leave some space for something like that, because there's going to be another one here. And another one here, because that will be... I don't think we need crude ever. Uh, but heavy, light, and lubricant, I think, will be referenced by things. Will they? For flamethrowers and things? I don't know if we'll actually need all those. We'll see. But definitely lubricants are going to be needed when we get around to the blue belts. Which is very far in the future. Alright. So yeah, there's an annoying little cliff down here we can go past, but I think right up top here is where I'll do the um, the belt production. We might work both top and bottom of the bus, which actually means then we don't we won't have to go as long to the right, which is kind of nice. Uh, on the other hand, I often like to leave one side of the bus clear so that I can have train stations to either pick up stuff off the bus or more likely deliver things to the bus, bus to, to recharge it or something. But uh, we'll still set this up here. Okay, so let's get some belt production first. So what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to just ghost image here because it happens to be the right width. And ghost image and another there. So we're not actually going to use those. What we're going to do is we're going to make yellow belts, yellow transport belts here, which need plates and gears. Actually, I probably want to move this back a bit so I have enough room for gear production. Again, whatever you think is enough room, leave more room. There, something like that. So we're going to do yellow belts here. And the thing is, the underground belts need yellow belts and the splitters also need ye a yellow belts. So we're going to do something like this. And the idea will be we'll produce yellow belts, grab them off of here, put them in a little chest so we've got a bit of a buffer. Although I'll change the chest to only allow for maybe one stack because we don't need to store a ton of belts in these. I'm going to shift right click, shift left click. So it copied the requirements into this chest, which is kind of nice. And so now what we want to do is we want to get iron plates and gear wheels over for the assembling machines over here. You also need iron plates. You also need iron plates over here. So what's going to happen is I'm going to run iron plates across this way. And then we're also going to need gears for the assembly machine. And in, in fact, we'll need them for the others. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some machines over here like this and like this and like this. And these guys are going to make gears for us. Now, I'm actually not sure that's going to be enough gear production. Uh, probably it won't be. But what I've done is allow just enough room so I can double up on this. Like just barely worked out so we can have more gear production later on, which is nice. So I'm going to get this. Ooh, uh, that's a stone. Let me just go and dig you out of the way. Tap, 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 tap. Excellent. Um, we will grab a splitter. Oh, I'm going to need some underground belts, uh, which I can't do. I need to grab some iron plates. There you go. Let's make a little bit of underground belts, a couple more splitters, something like that. Okay. Boom and boom. 
am I doing this right? No. No, I'm not. So yeah, this part won't work. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure something out. Um, so what I actually want to do... Yeah, I may not have left enough space to, like, scale this up, but... Yeah. We'll see. So we're going to make gears in all of these places. And I guess this belt is just going to have more iron plates to feed into gear production. Um, like that, like that, like that. And you're going to... No. Uh, oh, great, right. You're here to grab from the top. Like this. Excellent. And then if I power cable here... I can't... Yeah, but then I can... Well, yeah, we'll just... Um, do this and then run some power over this way <coughs> excuse me so we got a line coming down from the copper yeah there you go kind of like that all right so here the plan is gonna be Grab iron plates to feed there. And another one to feed this. Like this. Actually, since it doesn't make a difference with power poles, um, I actually want it to look like this. Centered up. Just for cuz. Something like that. All right, that, that pleases me enough. Um, and then over here, we need to go under. Uh, if I offset this, there's a couple of different ways to do it. Something like that is probably okay. Um, actually, you don't need gears, you do. Boom, boom. Am I out of yellow inserts? Yep, well, that'll be the next thing we queue up some production for. There we go. And then what we're gonna do is chest, chest, chest. Oh, you're right, I don't have the inserters. So I was say, don't bump bump me, but I guess it was pretty legitimate. And power, power, power like this. Um, I think I will put a restrictor on here. For now, like a full row of these yellow transport belts, uh, one stack and one stack is probably enough. We actually might want two stacks of the underground. We tend to go through a lot of undergrounds, but that'll happen. Okay, so this is producing, this is producing. The splitters are not, because the splitters need green circuits. So now, what we're gonna do is bring some green circuits to the party. Oh. Actually, we don't need a cable here or transport belt here or there uh, that's gonna be changed up Shroomp. actually what's gonna happen here is that like that and then undergrounds like this um, and then what I'm gonna do is build this transport the wrong way around and then rotate it so it's going top wise because that's really handy because we're gonna have our four coppers over here um, and then we're gonna have or more of something else. I guess that's the steel and miscellaneous. And then we've got the circuit stuff over here, which is going to involve a splitter right there. Uh, this and what I need are some undergrounds like that. There we go. Uh, do you really not have power? I guess not, yeah. I don't know, we'll do that then. I guess I could get rid of this one. All right, anyway, um, and then you're gonna grab green circuits, like so. Uh-oh, oh. something got destroyed. Oh, shoot! Run! I need a car. I need to build a car. Uh, I have bullets, yes I do. So what I'll do here is I'll, uh... oh, we got tons in our inventory and everything. Oh my God, it's a million miles away. How much stuff is gonna get wrecked? Oh my God, where the hell did you come from? I thought I was safe! Our pollution may have expanded. 
to hit something else. We'll see. Maybe something I hadn't seen yet on the radar. Oh my god, I'm sure so many things are being wrecked. I don't think it's going to ruin us or anything like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is at least a better sound than the previous alarm sound. This is way less annoying. All right, so they ate some of this. Um, oh yeah, they broke my balancer over here. Let's go and repair you. So I think what we had here is... That. Yes, okay. Repair this. And then I guess, yeah, we just uh, lost our overall sort of cable connections. There we go. So you're back to working. Did I lose anything else? I don't know. So where do these guys come from? Is it this group? Well, I mean, so it's not the north. I mean, these guys might get annoyed, but they're stopped by the wall. It must be this group that's just probably occasionally being tickled at. Um, hmm. Do I build a giant wall over here? I'm kind of going to have to. At least with the natural cliffs here, we can save ourselves a little bit of material. But the question partially becomes, like, where the hell do we put all the guns? There we go. A couple of guns there. Put 100 bullets into each one, which is lots. So the walls are there because the aliens will chew the walls first before the guns. bullets in each one again. And sometimes they get a little confused and it takes them a while to like readjust where they're trying to move to. here and they are far enough away that I don't think there's a lot of like spam from the alien nests so I think it'd be only very occasionally that it would get attacked because I don't think they're generating so that they spawn as the pollution hits them so they're not going to be hit by pollution very often there we go um, I mean they might come around down here I suppose it's worth dropping some more here yeah, we need our gate tech so we can build some gates in between. Um, well, I suppose I'll do this. I won't necessarily worry about building guns everywhere. So I think they're going to mo they're mostly beeline towards the source of production, I think, until they hit a wall. I don't think they pathfind against the walls until they find it or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. We'll do this. And these guns can be fairly far apart sometimes if it's not too dense of an attack. I do like to make sure they overlap each other. So if one's getting meleeed, both of its neighbors will attack. So with a long wall like this, we'll do that. And we'll probably have to go with a higher density later. And it would be nice to build our little sort of bullet tram system over here, but don't think that's in the cards. So these aren't going to have a ton of bullets each. Oh. Get that. Let me grab from here. There we go. All right. At least you got something. Hopefully that will stop that from being a problem. Oh, I guess it de did depower some of my, uh, my drills over here. Nice to have like redundant power cables too, to avoid some of these problems. Oh, there's no stone deposits here anymore. Oh, now what? Come on, what? Oh, these guns here, and a bunch of them are out of ammo. But that's okay. They're they're just there to do exactly what they're doing there. Buy some time, stop some spawning. See, these aren't running, so they're out of deposits underneath them. Uh, you as well. Always repair before you pick it up because it'll still be damaged in your inventory, which is less than ideal. So you're empty and you're empty, like that. So let's make sure we keep producing iron fairly quickly. Although right now we have a backlog of iron just sitting around not doing anything on our bus. But we will we will go through it pretty quickly 
soon. this I mean it's not gonna be very balanced because it'll it'll just put all the stuff on one side but that's okay for now just trying to try to save materials until we get the rest of the stuff automated 35 minutes in I want to keep going and at least finish what we're currently doing let's grab some of them bullets and some of them walls okay that's I mean that's more than some but I'm okay with it so yeah the iron's coming here and you'll see this where one side gets consumed more than the other um, because of the way these sort of pull things off and various things. So, I mean, the, you know, so you'll do various things with balancers and whatnot as we go. But these should be coming in very nicely now. So I should no longer have to handcraft them. And there'll always be a big pile of them waiting for me whenever I come over here. There we go. Lots of belts. So we're well suited over here. Okay, that's good and done. We're going to do the, um, our inserters, which are sort of kind of going to have the same structure. Um, and with that in mind, I might push it back a little further from the front Since we know we may have shorted ourselves on space ever so slightly There you go, so we are gonna do again with the gears like that and do, 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 do. We're still gonna need some plates up here There we go and so I'm gonna set up so you're going to make yellows. The red needs yellows as well. And you're going to be saved for blues. We're not going to do anything with you at this time. Um, yellows do need the electronic circuits. So what's going to happen? There's going to be a lot of like needing of the electronic circuits over here. So we'll sort of interweave that way. You don't need any more. You do need the gears. Maybe this isn't the way I normally set it up. I actually don't know. But it, it'll be fine. Um, so same thing here, you're gonna go come under and do this, and then you'll be going under to over here, which is gonna be fine and groovy. Like that, excellent. Um, so you're gonna grab, 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 grab. Place. Yeah, this is not the layout I normally do, but that's okay. I and mean, I could be going through my blueprint book, which is really handy for for things like this, you know? So you don't have to worry about memoring, memoring English much. It's been a long day for me. Um, remembering all of your various like patterns and builds and stuff like that. You just uh, save them in your blueprint book. We'll be making more use of that later on. Uh, and we're also going to want to replace all these mostly with blue inserters once we get that tech going. Uh, -na 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 -na. Boom. Boom. Something like this. And then, yeah, you'll need some power and you'll need to do some stuff as well. And we'll do the same thing where we've got a box here. So we're going to feed yellows this way. You're going to be limited to just the one stack. And actually, really just want the one stack of yellows here as well. Because you don't tend to need a million. Especially, we're going to be mostly just using blues later on. So we don't really need a million of these yellows. Maybe what I do is I go yellow, yellow, yellow into red, into blue. That might be the layout I do. This might end up being another yellow one. I don't know. Um, that is fine for now. So this is for iron excellent um but to do speaking of yellow stuff uh and grab more iron so that i can build some more inserters and actually getting this going um i guess what we actually do is we're going to be grabbing from there 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 Dumping, oops. Oh, I already had those set up. Uh, dun, 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 like that, excellent. You're gonna do this, you're gonna do that. So now you're just waiting for green circuits. Place these with undergrounds later. It's just hard to eyeball the lines until you get the uh, until you actually do get your uh, your bus out here. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, and then we need 
So we haven't used any reds yet, but we will. So the reds are long-handled inserters. Oh, I'm out of iron chests. Uh, they can reach further and they let you uh, work out things in certain areas that you wouldn't be able to otherwise. Get the power there. Um, you need to grab gears and plates. Done, done, done. And then you over here. Need more gears. And yeah, mo oh, something's shooting. It's just shooting though, yellow. Ah, over here. Oh, I should also put a radar over here too so I can have some vision about what's going on when I'm not around. Again, we could use slightly fewer parts if we just laid out our inserters slightly differently, but I like them being centered. Big old mess of cables, that's okay. So everything is producing over here. Mostly it just means we're making yellows and some reds. And so over here, I'm gonna want red, blue. Um, later on, we will want stack inserters and filter stack inserters. I don't tend to use filter inserters very often. Maybe I'll just leave them all off because they're kind of far away. But there we go. All right, done and done. Okay, this is like the biggest time saver. Bulk making these is a huge, huge thing. Uh, next episode, we will just make science. And I'll probably, I think what I'm gonna do is make our actual research labs right over here. So I'll probably make the science down here. And I think that'll fit in quite nicely. Folks, thanks for watching. And I'm gonna see you guys next time.